Shut up, compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Duke's Models, and welcome back to Tank the Rainbow, my silly project to break bad armor habits and learn some stuff by painting seven tanks the seven colors of the rainbow. If you're not sure what's going on, you may want to check out my video introducing the project, or check out the first tank to cross the line, a red Tamiya R35. Look for links in the description. Anyway, let's get on with the second rainbow tank, Tacom's Extremely Marginal PL01. Okay, here we are with Tacom's PL01, all built up and primed with brown Steinol res. Since we're working our way up the Roy G. Biv scale, this Polish prototype tank is going to be getting the orange treatment, and its constraint is heavy fading, which should be interesting with orange. Now, orange is a nutcracker of a color to spray at the best of times, and over brown, you're just looking for a bad time. So I decided to take a similar path to the red R35 and put down a coat of MRP Middlestone. While I was doing all this, I had the presence of mind to do some testing on a paint mule, and it showed that middle stone and pink bases produced slightly different tones in orange overcoats, so I figured I'd lean into that in the interest of some variation. Next, I moved on to MRP International Orange, but to be honest, I'm going to kind of blow off this part because, spoiler alert, it doesn't work. Oh, sure, I try to make it work, but... As with my first passes with reds on the R35, this orange is just a bit too dull. It's like University of Texas burnt orange, which isn't what I was going for. And yeah, I do the hairspray thing, and I do the fading thing by adding some yellow into the mix, and again, it just doesn't seem to work. And this is entirely on me. A big reason is that I was somewhat dual tracking this and the red R35, so the lessons that I was learning from the red maybe didn't catch in time. It's the exact same issue of not keeping on the gas. And that leads me into my first lesson for this build. Lesson. If you really want to learn shit, don't parallel track your builds. Number of lessons only reveal themselves in hindsight, and this is absolutely one of them. From here on out, it's one at a time. Or, if I have more than that, I'll be sure to spread them out in terms of stages. Since I wasn't happy with the International Orange, I switched over to MRP Luminous Fuck You Orange, which looks like someone bottled the late 80s. The luminous orange really kicks up the saturation and energy compared to the international orange. By a whole lot. Once the luminous orange is down, it's chased by a layer of hairspray, and then a fade mix of AK Real Color Luminous Orange, which is virtually identical to the MRP, mixed with some Tamiya Yellow and some AK Real Color White Gray. And then I'd ship it back in a few places to reveal the more luminous orange underneath. Now, at this point, the PL01 is faded, but its constraint is heavy fading, and I wouldn't call this heavy. And around this time, I actually came across a hammer of ours with an orange handle. The kids had left it in the backyard where it was at the mercy of the Texas sun for months, and it faded to this really yellowed, lightish orange. And I liked that tone a lot, and I was... You know, still smarting about the whole keep on the gas lesson, and so I went back to the fade coat, dialed back the orange, and dialed up the yellow. And this finally got me to the place I wanted to be. With the orange sorted out, I moved on to the next color. It's been my intention all along to do an orange and brown scheme, and I felt that AK Real Color NATO Brown had the requisite warmth to not clash too much with the orange. For the upper surfaces, I brought out a mix of AKRC NATO Brown, Off-White, and Dunkelgelb for the faded camo. And here I ran into some really interesting color shifts. Years and years ago, I did a Blue Nose P51 from the 352nd Fighter Group. And when I went to put down a dark brown panel wash on the nose, that shit turned red because the blue was just overpoweringly cooler. Here I ran into something of the opposite, with the faded yellow-orange turning my faded brown mix more of a green-tinged kind of gray. Which leads to the next lesson. Lesson. Pay attention to how colors interact. Now, I'm sure a good many of you watching this have experienced weird color shifts before, 
or know the dangers of, say, lightening olive drab with white and getting this weird, sickly, yellow-looking shit. And that's part of it. But this is more how colors go down over other colors. I already know, and I've demonstrated in places like Black Basing 201, how you can use complementary colors and undercoats to slightly desaturate your top colors. So a red will desaturate a blue, and so on. But in this extreme case, as with the blue-nosed Mustang, you have this weird opposite thing happening. The color underneath is so tonally strong that it's just overpowering the other color. So a warm light brown actually goes cool and bluer, and thus grayer against it. And it's, it's fucking weird. But it makes me wonder if my annoyance at all those two green ammo and AK enamel washers are actually somewhat intentional to kind of stave off this effect. Now, one thing I noticed as I started in on the faded upper camo is that the orange base is doing it no favors. So I bring in some MRP NATO Brown to establish a darker base and give the lighter mix something to fade from. As I resumed the fade code, I was running into the color shift issue again. So I pulled the brakes and revised my mix, this time going with MRP NATO Brown, MRP Radom Tan, MRP Orange Yellow, and White. So basically seriously dialing up the warm side of things to stave off the cooling effect. Or not stave off so much as correct for it. If you look in the color cup, what's there is much warmer than what's building up on the surface of the PL01. It kind of reminds me of when you're playing golf and you're slicing like crazy, so you just say fuck it and start aiming way left. After the color is established, I lighten the mix even more for some additional fading, and then bring in stencils to add some variation. And now that the paint is sorted, it's time to pay attention to the clear parts. These are a pain in the ass because they're tiny, and because the whole part is clear, and masking these little circles is just not enjoyable. Even with my punch set, getting nice round masking circles this small is going to be a challenge. But before I tackle that masking job, I want to place some Hasegawa polarized film on the inside of the clear parts to get that cool green reflectivity thing going on. Next, it's onto the taillights, which aren't great. I paint them from the inside with Tamiya clear red and clear yellow, backed with silver. And somewhere along the way, I managed to lose the two smallest clear parts to tweezer fire. So, for what I assume is the machine gun camera scope thing, that's the technical term, I trim a piece of film to size and just shove it into the square hole. For the other little sensor thing hanging out on the top of the turret, I cut a piece of evergreen sheet to size, punch a few holes, and decide fuck it, let's paint it MRP lemon yellow just to have a splash of something else going on. The big main gun scope sensor thing that's buried to one side, it gets painted MRP night camo black. With the clear parts sorted, the next move is into weathering, starting with a pin and panel line wash using Ammo's Africa Core Wash. This dark brown shade actually holds its own pretty well against the orange. And once it's had a bit of time to dry, I remove the excess with some odorless mineral spirits and Q-tips. Now, before I go too much further here, I need to see to the muzzle brake. I've kind of left it alone, and it needs some attention. To mask it off, I use a circle from my always handy set of Ushi vinyl circle masks. Slice one side, slide it over, place a bit more tape around the back side to prevent overspray, because the orange is super sensitive to it. And then I go to town with MRP Night Camo Black, which is one of my go-to not-quite-blacks.
Now it's off to an entirely different part of this tank, the lower section, to really start the weathering. I've decided somewhere along the way that I think I want to keep this tank more faded than particularly dirty, but you know, it still needs a little something something. For the task, I'm dipping back into the gun's Mr. Weathering color well, this time with a new color that I'd received literally that day. Light grayish. God, I love these gun's Mr. Weathering color names. Light grayish. My god. Anyway, this goes on to the visible portions of the tracks and the wheels, as well as the front and rear, in a mix of spattering and stippling. And of course, when it comes to armor and weathering, one color isn't usually enough to do the job. So I come through with a second round of spattering using ammo Starship Wash to introduce a few dark bits. Then it's onto the lower side skirts to continue the spattering work. It's really tricky on this tank because of the size of those skirts just don't really leave a lot of room for filth to kick. And as I'm doing this and spattering light grayish and ammo starship wash across the bottom of the side skirts, this is about where I also start running into both a lack of vision and a lack of fucks, which I'll call another lesson. Lesson, have a destination in mind. With this tank, I didn't really have anything more in mind than orange and fading I didn't think through how I wanted to have it weathered or not weathered, and that led me to this point where I was bumble-fucking around with no real idea of where I wanted to take things. Dusty, muddy, clean, rain-streaked, any of them would have provided a bit of an aiming point. And honestly, a lack of destination may not have been a deal-breaker if it wasn't for my shoddy build of this kit. Now, the Tacom PL-01 is not a good kit. Everything about it just feels rushed and slipshod. And maybe to my detriment, I took on that attitude myself when I was building it. The result is visible gaps all over the place. Mold seams I didn't get to, and plastic goobers where there really just shouldn't be any. I've been telling myself all along that I'm treating these Tank the Rainbow builds more like advanced mules. And that's a pleasant fiction. Because honestly, it's hard to unsee the flaws. And this far into the game... I really have no motivation to go back and fix them. So I think starting from a place you're not going to regret may be as important as knowing where you want to take things, because it'll keep your head where it needs to be, instead of getting distracted by this and that and all the other fuck-ups. With this lack of vision and my fucks running on fumes, I moved on to the upper surfaces, which I wanted to fade out even more with some guns Mr. Weathering Color white dust. This stuff is pretty great, and it really gives a neat, faded, dusted out kind of effect. Next, I decided that I wanted to find out if I could do the brush chipping thing on this silly orange color. Uncle Night Shift's method involves putting down a lighter color and then putting a dark gray brown type of tone inside of it. And this creates a neat optical illusion that really gives the chips a sense of depth that you just don't get from hairspray. But how do I go lighter? The orange, particularly up top, is already faded. And so applying what passes in my brain for logic, I figured it'd be the opposite. You know, if the faded paint chips, you'll get edges of less faded paint underneath, right? So I went at the shit with straight AKRC Luminous Orange. And that stuff is only barely brushable, but it's a lot more brushable than the MRP flavor. So, you know, go with what you got. Anyway, I got so focused on just brushing that shit that I didn't really put much thought into where the chips were actually going. And when I came around with the darker portions for the chips, I have to admit... I've regretted taking this step. Some of the chips worked out quite well, but a lot of them seem clumsy, and I'm chalking that up both to poor location and execution on my part, 
rather than some dumb shit like, Durr, you can't chip faded paint. Yes, you can. Uh, but you can also suck at it, like me. So, I clearly still need to work on my brush chips. And I also need to work on that whole having a vision and thinking shit through thing. Now questioning what will run out first, my fucks or the build, I bust out some Ushi iron polishing powder to give the muzzle brake a little something something. I also spice up the tracks in just a few places with some graphite courtesy of a number two pencil and then the PLO one is done. Overall I have to say this build definitely contained more hard lessons than it did useful epiphanies. Sure it's cool to get some added appreciation of color interaction but I started with a subpar kit, built it in a subpar slapdash fashion and went into it with nothing but a hazy vision at best and for all of that I paid the price. Not only in terms of sucking the fun out of what's usually one of my favorite parts of an armor build, but also ultimately coming up short of where I wanted it to be. If anything, I think that is the enduring lesson of this build for me. That the work up front, whether it's the construction and cleanup, or conceptualizing the whole weathering picture, all of it pays off downstream. And half-assing it can come back to bite you in the ass. So that just about does it for this second Tank the Rainbow build. Be sure to keep an eye out for the third, a strikingly yellow FV4005 sometime in the future. You know, between a busy bench and a busy life, and a fair amount of work needed for these videos and voiceovers, it's tough to call exactly when I'll have that next video out, but it will be out. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and catch y'all later.